So hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about uh, legacy con evolution, the improvements and evolution in the components that we have during this year, and the things that we are some of the things that we are working on right now. So uh, I'm Victor, but there is also Juan that will talk in the second part of this uh, talk. Uh, let me show you briefly what we are going to talk about today. So we are going to talk about uh, the UX de uh, design team. Uh, I will offer some updates and news in Lexicon, and then uh, Juan will come in the stage and uh, we'll talk about something that we call Lexicon for Sites, and then the relation between Lexicon and Clay and the news that, that we have there. So. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so library has been betting a lot uh, in design during these last years, and uh, I truly believe that library is not anymore an only awesome coders company. And why do I see so this? Is because uh, products are not only built and created by uh, developers. We have project managers. We have product managers. There are testers also, and there are many other roles in the, in the company to build these awesome products. But there are also UX designers, and designers uh, care about the experience in the product, also about design, and to make our products uh, really easy to use for people. And we are in this, in this way right now. We are transforming a portal. We have we deploy events, application that you may already know. And I want to show you how was the evolution of the team along the time. So the first designer in the company was uh, Nate, that you might see him around here. Uh, but then the uh, team started growing up with, uh, with Juan and Vitor, and then we were more and more designers. And I think that in the future, by my calculations, we will be many more. I think that by 2022, we will be around 100 designers. 100 designers with different skill sets, with different personalities, but all of them with, uh, with the same goal, that is bringing the best uh, user experience into our products uh, possible, right? And I'm really sure that designers will conquer library. And, uh, Probably this conference will not only be a coders uh, conference anymore in the future, and it will be there will be much more space shared with designers, and we'll be here uh, having a good good event. But okay, let's go into our news and updates. So related to accessibility, um, library is betting a lot of effort in accessibility, because it's really important, not only for us, but for our clients. And from the design team, uh, we are also working on this. Uh, it both relates to interaction design. So the first thing we, we did is to create a new color palette, a color palette with uh, more pure colors, less bright than before, which help us to, to enhance, enhance uh, accessibility. Let me compare it with the previous version that we have in Atlas. So you can see the difference, right? You see that here, the, well, the previous colors were more bright and less pure than the ones that we have on, the, uh, on, the, on your right side. Uh, but let's talk, for example, about this old primary color. So we had it in all buttons. As a, as a background color, and the uh, foreground color, the font color, was white. And it was never uh, AA compliant. So this means that for many of our users with uh, uh, visual uh, problems, it was difficult to, to realize that those buttons, but buttons were, were there. Let me show you another example. This used to be or alerts, right? Maybe you know them from uh, 7.0. So the light uh, background uh, against the, the text color uh, didn't have enough color contrast. And with our new palette, 
uh, this is much better. We get to solve all these solutions. We are always AA compliant, and we also have uh, reinforced our alerts uh, with icons that um, reinforce the message. Here you can see these alerts in a different shape or different status messages inside a form, for example. OK, related to forms, this is one of our most used templates. And uh, we are going to see what are the problematic around it. So this is our form. We have some problems with the fields, not only with the shape, but also with the uh, length, the, the width of the field. We have a problem with the length of the form because there are many sections in a row. And we also have problems with what relates to frustration, filling a form, right? And these are the solutions that we have. So the fields, that we don't say that the fields or these kind of fields are a bad solution. They are really great for uh, mobile devices where the screen is uh, small and they are really easy to find and discover. But when you go to a, a large uh, screen, like a desktop, uh, these fields uh, have problems related to, to finding the field and realizing that there is a field there. So our new fields are more traditional. And this is not bad. This is good. Well, this is demonstrated that it's really easy to find these fields uh, and fill them. And also, we had a problem with these uh, old fields, the ones on, the, on your left side, because when they were really wide, they looked like separator lines. And we don't want to produce uh, this effect on our users. Uh, related to the form's length, um, our problems are that we have uh, really many consecutive embedded form sections, what makes a form really, really long. And the task of filling this uh, form becomes really long and stressing. So it is also difficult to find for a section. If someone asks you to go to a specific section of a form, you have to scroll up and down and go into detail to see w where uh, this section is. That's not really good. Um, so we have uh, come up with this new solution that we've tested with, with users, where we put all our sections here in this vertical menu on the left side. Uh, so whenever you click one of these sections, the form is loaded in the right side. Our uh, form box now is narrower. So the, focus, uh, so the user has to focus in a more restricted area, and uh, he feels or she feels less lost. Um, also, um, yeah. So it is uh, easier to scan. So when, whenever someone asks you uh, to look for a, for a section in the form, it's really easy because you come here, you know, uh, user information, and then, uh, for example, organizations for each user, right? And the table of organizations will be loaded here. OK, let's go into data set displays. So for sure, this is uh, our second or our first uh, more used template in, in LiveRay administration side. So we wanted to, to cover or to study uh, the management bar that is our toolbar, and also the, the most common visualizations that are below, that are the list that you see here. This is our new list. Um, we are also studying or went uh, over the car visualization and the table visualization. But let's go deep first into uh, the management bar. Let's go deep into search. So our search input uh, used to be in the navigation bar. And the navigation bar is used to navigate, not to search. It's not a toolbar. So in this navigation bar, there can be uh, many other tabs. And it's difficult to understand the, um, the scope that this input uh, search box has, right? So you are not, it's difficult to understand if you are looking over the currently selected tab or over all the tabs that could be there. So what we have done is to place um, the search input into its current place, into the uh, toolbar, into our management bar. So there, it's always uh, focusing 
on the data visualization or on the table, the, da the data set that is below it. Also, uh, we have change or view change component. We were always forcing you to put these three buttons there. And it didn't make sense because sometimes you were only uh, using one data visualization, for example, the table. And the other two buttons um, were just disabled. And it was like promising that you were going to see something in the future, but it never come. Uh, also, when you don't have a visualization, I mean, when you only have one visualization, you don't need these three buttons. It's, it doesn't make sense. So right now, with the new uh, management bar component, when you don't have a visualization there, I mean, when you only have one visualization, uh, you don't need this button. But whenever you have more than one visualization, we have this drop down where you can select the visualization that you want. And by the way, this is our new uh, cards visualization that gives more space uh, to the images with a new um, image aspect ratio that is set, set to 16.9. Uh, and uh, we have new improvements in the card. So whenever you have two images that are similar, but the, the size are different, now it's possible to differentiate them because we have the background grid that lets you do that. Also, we have more space for the names. So it's easier to differentiate them. And last but not least, we have this improvement. For images that were really small, you used to see them pixelated. And now you can see them uh, fully in a good resolution, like icons. So do you remember how to add an element into a data set? Probably you know it. You have to use the plus button that is here. OK, so we have a problem with this button. So when you have a large screen, as the button is stick to the, sorry, to the uh, bottom right corner of the screen, it goes away with the edge of the screen, right? And this is bad, because we are always asking you to start reading from here. This is where usually everyone starts reading from the top left side of the corner. And we are placing you the most important action here on the bottom right. So you have to do all these paths to find your actions. So we have changed that. We have put this tool that is adding into the management bar that is a toolbar. So with our new color palette, this button is much more evident. Also, as, re as users read in an F shape, so they will start reading over there, but they will always go there, scanning the screen, and then all this area, uh, they will always uh, find the, these actions. OK, who knows how to select all elements in a data set? Probably you know it. You have to click in the management bar to select all elements inside the page, then go to the bottom, change page, go back again, select all elements in a page, go down, change page. OK, let's do this exercise. So imagine that you have 623 files and a page size of 20 items. This is 32 pages. If you make the calculations, you need 63 clicks to select all elements. What? So we are in 2017. There must be a more modern way or an easier way to do this, right? So let's take a look at this. So we click once, we click twice, and all elements are selected. This is a feature that all our clients were requesting. Please do this task easier. Do uh, the multiple selection way faster. And we have done it. Just two clicks to select all elements. Yay, <laughs> really good. <laughs> OK, uh, let's go into, into tables. So we have really three good uh, new improvements. Uh, usually, our tables used to have many, many information. And maybe your clients want to put really a lot of information. But they also want to put actions there, right? So what we have done is to make available uh, quick, row, uh, quick actions in row hover. So you will have up to three most important quick actions that you want to have in a shape of an icon, right? 
you can place uh, whatever action you want there, uh, only if it has an icon representation. Also, um, as we know that we have users of different type in, uh, in, our, in our clients, uh, we want to let them um, reorder the table in the way they want. So maybe uh, the author is not important for some of the users, and they want to put it in another part of the, of the table. Or maybe what they really want is to switch off this column, because it, it's creating pollution in the screen for them. And we want their users to find the, the data that they want as fast as possible. So my last thing that I want to talk today about is charts. So we are introducing charts in Lexicon and Clay. And this is something that uh, is still work in progress, but uh, I mean, the implementation is almost there, and our designs are pretty, pretty concrete. So we are introducing charts into Lexicon. And we will be providing you not only a color palette, but a set of accessibility recommendations and these implementations of accessibility into, into Clay. And every time I see this, every day I see this, I feel like this little crazy dog with a new toy that I want to play with. So this will be a great tool for all your data visualizations as um, statistics in, uh, for your portlets, statistics uh, that you want to show in your user's profile or wherever. So thanks, everyone. Now I leave you with Juan. Hi, uh, I'm Juan, and yes, I'm going to talk about something not new, but uh, a new project that uh, we have started in, in part of the Lexicon team that is called Lex uh, Lexicon for Sites. Okay. So, uh, in the first version of Lexicon, we put uh, a lot of effort trying to improve the design and the user experience, but basically in the administration part of the, of the platform. Uh, so, uh, I think we all agree that we left the, the site part, the, the, the environment where we actually build the sites, a little bit aside. We, do, we didn't give uh, uh, so much uh, love to this part of the, of, the, of the platform. So, there were other priorities by then. So, we ended offering basically a plain framework uh, for designers, for developers to build over it but not offering a proper, a good uh, design and user experience by default. Let's see some, some examples of, of what I mean. If you see this picture, for example, you can see here some, I mean, some visual problems. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, if there is more pretty or less pretty, is more or less attractive. I'm talking about uh, how this can affect the intelligibility, the usability, and finally, uh, the predisposition we have regarding to its use. So, we, if we go more into detail, we can see, for example, how applications uh, like Asset Publisher, for example, display the content by default can be uh, a little bit intimidating. Hmm? Uh, if you see how the content, how the information is, is organized, inside the, the portlet, you can see that it's very difficult to, to understand the visual hierarchies that, uh, that we have here. And it's very difficult to identify the different content blocks. You never know. I mean, it's very difficult to, to see uh, where the asset starts, where the asset ends, which part of the content belongs to the portlet structure or which part or which belongs to the, to the asset item. So it's not, it's not, it's not very easy. Uh, we have also, in some cases, uh, important problems trying to solve complex navigation needs, as we can see here in this uh, dark part of the wiki portlet. For example, we have, we have here, uh, I don't know, three, four, five classes of, of uh, navigation tabs, for example. And then we think also there is a uh, a excess of uniformity, a visual uniformity on all the applications on, the, on, this, uh, on this part. Okay. Okay. No, this is the. Sorry.
Okay, come on. Okay, sorry. So let's see. Uh, they all look very similar, and they're using basically patterns that were designed for the administration part, and then we are using in the side part as well. So uh, there is a lack of personality and identification of the characteristics, the characteristics and features that finally they made different, and we want to solve this. So uh, summarizing. We think we can see a clear difference between the, the experience provided by in the administration part of the platform and the experience that we provide on the side part of the platform. The first impulse is just, sometimes it's just okay, I'm going to get rid of all of this and start from zero. And this is what happened many times. And we know that uh, the clients, most of the times, of all of the times, I'm going to rebuild this, I'm going to redesign and, and restyle and do the, their interfaces uh, that they need for according to their interests. But uh, I think we, we can do it much better. And on the other hand, beside the, the usability of functional problems, uh, we think this, this implies uh, a pure communication of the values of the product and ultimately the communication of the brand. So, uh, as some of you already know, uh, we are working in a set of initiatives that uh, we are putting together with the, with the task, no, with the objective uh, to, put, to make LiveRig uh, a good uh, tool for, for building websites. This is, uh, these initiatives are around the project called Mothers and Build, Mothers I Building that the main objective, the main goal of, of this project is make LiveRef the best uh, website builder and CMS platform on the market. Two, of course. Okay, this is, a, uh, I mean, I'm just talking about, the, about this just to put some context because, but uh, Norbit or me are the people that, uh, the, best, the best suited to, to talk about this. Okay, this is a long-term project that will start to see the light uh, for the next release, but we will be, develop, we be, we be developing it and presenting it gradually. Okay, so anyway, if any of you uh, have some interest in, in knowing a little bit more about this, this uh, interesting project, Moise Building, you just can ask Jorge Ferrer or whatever other person that belongs to the Web Experience team and they will be happy to, to give you more, more details, more clues about it. But uh, from our part, from the lexicon side, in relating to, related to, the, to this project, to Mother Side Building, what we are doing is basically uh, trying to solve some of the things that uh, we have seen at the, at the beginning, trying to solve these problems that we have in, 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 the, in the interface, in the visualization of the, of the information, uh, etc. And there, we are doing this by this. Going to talk a little bit about improving the information uh, architecture of the portals, creating better defined content hierarchies, providing greater flexibility through helping building modular components, giving more personality and, and differentiation to applications, building visually more attractive and up-to-date interfaces, and ultimately creating an environment in which in which you, you would like to work, basically. And let's see some examples of, of the work we are doing. We have started from the very basic, setting the base grid, setting the, the main structural metrics, for example, then rethinking the, the portlet space as a multipurpose container, uh, reviewing as well uh, the model of the main content unity that we have in the, in the, the platform that is the, as, the asset, okay? trying to find, a, to find a way to display better all the information, a consistent solution, but on the other hand, versatile enough to give support to the, the different specifications, the different needs that the, all the applications that we have in, in, in the side part already have. We can see here this in context, for example. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, starting from this, uh, we, are, we are right now 
and in collaboration with the uh, other multifunctional teams uh, that work in the portal, and especially with uh, David Aragonés, that's here, here, and is working together with me very hard in this project. Uh, we are just redesigning the, the transversal patterns that uh, we can see apl apply in most of the applications on, uh, on this part of the, the, the portal. And, and also redesign, redesigning all the applications uh, from the base. Trying to, using lexicon as a base, but again, embracing all these specifications, all the differentiations, and trying to give them more personality. Okay. Uh, patterns, for example, like uh, data set display that we have already in the administration part, but we, we have done a version mod, more suited, more adapted to the, to the sites part. This is a pattern that we can find in the, in the Documents and Media portlet. We can find it in the Bookmarks, port, book, bookmarks portlet, for example. We have been working hard, again, in blocks, for example. Hmm. Uh, we are, we are introducing as well new ADTs, new application display templates, more aligned uh, with the actual trends, for example, like this uh, ADT based in cards. We are trying to uh, establish applications like uh, message boards or wiki to make it more, more understandable, more identificated, more focused. And this is, the, the, um, for example, the, the, the new design that we are working on for the wiki portlet. And of course, we are taking a lot of care trying to, to okay, giving attention to every detail just to, to give a fully responsive solution for every, every, every application, every, every portlet. Because, because we think that in this environment, it's especially important. So for, for us, it's very important to do. This is the, the mobile solution for the wiki, wiki portal, for example, for the blogs, blog entry, and how the, the, the comments on the blog entry are displayed, for example. Then there's a, there was one thing that we wanted to improve as well, that was the, how to recognize the, the tools that belong uh, to an editor and differentiate from the tools that uh, are actually that belong actually to the to the to the website. I don't know if I'm explaining. <laughs> so we 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 decided to use the blue color just to identify the the, the the tools that belong to the editor of the page uh, to differentiate for the for the tools that the the actual site has. Basically, you can see all the other tools now visible, but uh, in the real context. Only the tools that belong, that are on the widget or portlet level, are going to be visible, are going to see. But then the rest of the tools uh, will appear only when you do, you, are, you do hover on each asset or each piece of content, for example. So, sorry. So at this point, uh, maybe you're thinking, okay, I like it, this is nice, or it's not nice, I don't like it at all. But uh, what can I do with this? Uh, how can I use Lexicon? What, what can I use Lexicon, basically? So we think it's fair to, we think it's fair to, to talk a little bit about, about uh, Clay. I don't know uh, if you, maybe some of you, you know already what's Clay or not, okay? Uh, it's, it's not a project that is promoted by, by the Lexicon. It's a, it's a project that is that's in, uh, initiated and promoted by, uh, by the front-end infrastructure team. But uh, I think it's interesting to talk about it to give a, a little bit of context. So originally, uh, Lexicon was a, a, concept, a concept that combined uh, Design and implementation at the same time. And this has generated some some confusion some 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 sometimes. So, and one of the many initiatives that uh, we are doing just to to solve these confusions and and to make things clear and to improve the the flow between the the clay and lexicon is the creation of clay. Okay, as I said, I'm not going to talk very much about clay. And just to make some some statements that may maybe. Be, uh, make it the, the, the concept more clear. So at this point, Lexicon is a user experience language and interface design system. It's the one that we use in the portal right now and in other products. 
and clay is the implementation of lexicon. But uh, to be more accurate, we, we can say that clay is our implementation of lexicon. So that means that there might be others. Okay? Again, uh, I think it's very, very unfair to, to put this on the, on the table and not say anything else about, about clay. Because most of you, I'm sure that you are very interested in that. But uh, I'm sure that uh, Chema or whatever other person from the, from the front end infra infrastructure team will be very happy again to give you more information, more details clue about this. Okay? What we can do right now from, from Lexicon is present the. Okay. Let me check. No. It's not working. Now we have to. Okay, okay. Now it's working. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, just to, what we can do is just to present the, the, the new websites that they're, go, that are going to host and give, after, give access to, the, to both the Lexicon and, and Clay projects. Okay, um, I think um, yeah, we are working on this. We are not going to be released maybe until uh, um, in a few weeks, for example. But uh, we think that we will be interesting because maybe it, con it can contribute to put clear the different scopes of the different projects, but also the, the strong connections that they, they have uh, between them. So just to, to, to give you an overview and to, to see the... Uh, how is the, the visual identification, the visual identity of, of about those, those projects. So, uh, basically, that's it. Uh, as the protocol says that we have to make a quick summary, we'll just talk about, uh, just remind you that uh, we have been talking about, uh, in the block of, of lexicon improvements, we have been talking about accessibility, forms, that as a display, we introduced you the work we are doing with charts. We introduced you the work we are doing for for sites for the site part of the, of the platform. And finally, very quickly, but uh, it's okay. And if you are interested in and in see any, anything else, you can just put in contact with us. We don't have, we have no problem. We show you the new lexicon site and site projects. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hope you like it.